friends, it's Gwen and I'm back with something a little bit different today. Today I am organizing my scrapbook papers. I'm in the studio and I am on a mission. I need to sort this pile right here. See all those pink boxes on the left? I am overflowing in those boxes. I have several now on the top of the shelf. I have too many supplies and I do want to go through and just have a look at what's there, have a bit of a purge. I'm expecting two new collections, the Parasol collection from Maggie Holmes and Storyteller from Coco Vanilla Studio. And I actually don't have anywhere to put those new collections. And that's a problem. So today's the day I thought I would get into the studio and have a little bit of a dig through everything and get organizing. And I thought I would take you along for that and talk to you a little bit about how I organize my scrapbook supplies and how I go about decluttering as well. So the first thing I want to talk about when it comes to organizing scrapbook supplies is that you really need to know what kind of scrapbooker you are. If you're the kind of scrapbooker that prefers to work with kits, then you need to store your supplies in kits. If you're like me, I actually these days really only scrapbook by collection. I really don't mix my supplies. If I was going to scrapbook, I would grab my photo and the first thing I would think about is what collection goes with this photo. And then I would pull that collection and just scrapbook with those supplies. That's just how I do it. So if I was to say, go ahead and sort everything by color, I couldn't scrapbook. I wouldn't know where anything is because I don't create like that. So knowing the type of scrapbooker that you are is really important because obviously then you can store your supplies in a way that helps you scrapbook faster and more easily. So for me, that is definitely by collection. I also have some real favorite manufacturers, some go-to manufacturers, including Maggie Holmes, Coco Vanilla Studio, Pink Fresh Studio, and I do have a few little Simple Stories uh, options as well. Oh, that's me showing you that my Maggie Holmes collection as it is doesn't fit and I've still got Parasol to come. Uh, yes, yeah, so I actually also, whilst I collect everything and store it by collection, I do also store the collections for a manufacturer together. So here's an example of the Pink Fresh Studio supplies that I have. And you can see here, all the boxes are labeled. So Maggie Holmes is on the left and Coco Vanilla Studio is on the right. I heard years ago that you should make things far more easy to put away than it is to take them out. Because when you go to take something out, you're motivated to use it. So you'll go to the trouble of a few extra steps. But when you go to put something away, well, you're done with it. So you're not as motivated. So it's always best to make it as easy as possible to put something away. And I find for me that big bins like the ones that I use in my studio here, they really help me to do that. Now, I do have two exceptions to this whole collection manufacturer um, idea that I'm working with. And those two things are Christmas and boys. And those I like to store by theme. So it doesn't matter who has made the collection, whether it be Coco Vanilla Studio or Simple Stories, all of the boys themed items go together and all of the Christmas themed items go together. I do still keep them within their collections though. So they're in a 12 by 13 Ziploc bag and all of the collection stays together. It's just that then those different collections are then stored in one of those larger containers. So I did go through and declutter quite a lot. I got rid of this entire paper pad except for one sheet of pattern paper and I kept it because it's got bows on it and I'm all about them bows. So it has gone into this container here, which is the only container that I have with just random individual pattern papers in it. From years back, I have kept some of those 
And you know what? To be honest, I, I don't use them. So I do need to set about a plan for getting that to happen. I did want to show you inside one of the 12 by 13 inch boxes. This is how I store each collection. So any paper pads or project pads that come in the line, they go down the bottom section. I've then got these 12 by 13 inch Ziploc bags. They're just like a Ziploc bag, but they're, they're giant. And they perfectly fit the pattern papers, which is really good. Any that have been cut belong in the front there like that. That allows all of the papers to stay nice and flat. And then on top of those, I'll add things like the paper pads, the stickers and the thicker sets. I'll also add in all of my embellishments. I like to keep those in separate Ziploc bags, which you'll see here in a moment, but all of the stickers and stuff, they all go down the side like so. Then there'll be my embellishments. Oh yes, that is the paper scraps from the paper pads. Here are the embellishments. And then I do keep this backing sheet. If I'm diligent, I will cross them off as I use them. I don't believe I have been for this particular collection. Oh yes, and this is the chipboard sheets. So for the Maggie Holmes collections, they come on a big 12 by 12 uh, sheet. I don't really like them like that. I don't like to use them like that. So I do actually pull them all off that sticker sheet. I remove the sticky residue and I pop them in a baggie and I use them more as if they were little die cut pieces, but obviously they're chipboard rather than stickers. I hope that makes sense. Now, because I bought so much Garden Party, it is all in a box on its own. Most of my collections, I haven't got that much of. So I can fit three and four collections within each container. So I did quickly want to show you how I go about that. So this is Sunny Days. Again, same sort of principle. They all go uh, pattern paper first, then the sticker sheets and the paper pads. And then on top of that goes embellishments and then more chipboard. So there's another look at the chipboard and how I store that rather than keeping it as a 12 by 12 sheet. In a moment here, you'll see how I store the same collections in the upright containers. So those are the ones that are from Kmart. Exactly the same, but they get to stand upright and they're all grouped together by their collection. So now I have a bunch of supplies that I am going to donate. I also have a little pile of supplies that I want to try and use up. So I'm going to keep them kicking around the studio here and hopefully that will help me focus on using those ones up. Thank you so much for being here, my creative friends. I hope you enjoyed this organizing video. I have loads more scrapbooking process videos to come. So I'll see you all again very soon. Until then, bye. Thank you.